So, let us take this problem. Huh? The wide plan section whose properties are listed below is used to support a uniformly distributed load throughout its length on simple supports of 6 meters apart. So, we have here a beam simply supported on 6 meter span and it is loaded by uniformly distributed load W. Now, said beam is laterally supported by minor beams at third points. So, we have here a minor beam here and a minor beam here at third points. Meaning, this is 2 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters. Meaning, your LB is 2 meters. This is your laterally unsupported length, not the 6 meters. Okay? Because of the lateral beam here, so that serves as la that serve as lateral support lb is 2 meters now these are your properties including this cb is 1.67 using lrfd find the maximum uniform live load that said beam can safely carry aside from 20 kN per meter uniform dead load so, this is your uniform dead load of 20 kN per meter. And on top of that, we also have the uniform live load that is unknown. So, in order for this beam to be safe, using LRFD, our M ultimate actual or applied is 1.2 moment due to dead load plus 1.6 moment due to live load must be less than or equal to phi m n the moment due to uniform load is w l squared over 8 so this is going to be 1.2 this is w dead load 20 times L 6 squared over 8 While this is 1.6 W live load L squared 6 squared over 8 Must be less than or equal to 5 Your 5 for moment is 0.9 times Mn Let me call this equation 1 so, in order to solve W live load, I need MN of the section. Now, to solve the MN of the section, let us check first web compaction. For the web compaction, let us have our lower limit and upper limit of our length to thickness ratio our lower limit lambda p is equal to 3.76 multiplied by square root of e over fy so you substitute the value of e here and fy 200 gigapascal is 200,000 over fy 250 you substitute that 3.76 square root of 200 gigapascal is 200,000 megapascal over FY 250. You compute this and you'll get 106.34. That is the lower limit. For our upper limit, lambda R, this is 5.7 square root of E over FY. Again, substitute for E 200,000 for FY 250. You will get here a value that is equal to 161.22. Okay? Alright. Now, our lambda for web is equal to 
h over the thickness of the web now what is our h now this is our wide flange our d is given as 450 the thickness of flange is known to be equal to 12 this is 12 this is 12 so this is the h the height of the web this one so it is 450 minus 12 minus 12 450 minus 24 so this is going to be 426 now in passing the center of lunch to center of lunch so this will be our d prime or also called as h o and this would be 426 plus one half of 12 6 plus 6 so this is 426 plus 426 this is going to be equal to 426 ulit ulit so this is 426 plus 6 plus 6 426 plus 12 this is 438 mm okay and bf by the way is given in the problem as 250 and we will be using later this one this is bf over 2 which is 1 half of 250 1 to 5 so therefore the lambda of our web is h over the thickness of web this is 4 to 6 over the thickness of web is given to be equal to 10 mm so over 10 so therefore this is 42.6 now our lower limit is 106 so this is less than lambda p the lower limit when your actual length to thickness of web is less than the lower limit, therefore we conclude that web is compact. Now, when web is compact, let us consider now, first to consider is the compression flange yielding. When web, when web is compact, our MN considering compression flange yielding is going to be MP which is FYZ okay so in here this is going to be equal to FY given to be 250 and our Z is equal to 1.77 times 10 to the 6 and this is going to be 442.5 times 10 to the 6 newton millimeters 10 to the 6 newton millimeters is kilonewton meter so our mn for compression flange yielding is going to be 442.5 kilonewton meter let us check now the mn for lateral torsional buckling so in here we will check our lb versus the lower limit lp and lr the subscript for lower limit is p the subscript for upper limit is r parang P, U, R. Wala lang yung Q. So, for our LP, it is 1.76 multiplied by RY square root of E over FY. So, this is going to be 1.76. Our RY in the problem is equal to 55.2 times the square root of 200,000 
MPA over FY250. So computing this, what we will get will be, so what we will get here will be 2748.9 millimeters. Or this is 2.75 meters. This is the lower limit. Now, our LB is 2 meters. So as you can see here, our LB is less than the lower limit LP. Because this is 2 meters while this is 2.75 meaning our beam is laterally supported. If it is laterally supported, therefore, our MN is going to be so far the smallest value that is MP is equal to 442.5 kilonewton meter. So, this is our MN considering lateral torsional buckling, meaning torsional buckling limit doesn't apply. So, we apply the compression, compression plunge yielding. Now, there is one more to be investigated here, the local flange, compression flange buckling. So, for our compression flange local buckling, let us check its compaction. For its compaction, let us check its lower limit. Our lower limit lambda P for the flange is equal to 0 0.38 square root of E over FY. So, in here, this is 0.38 square root of E, this is 200,000 over FY 250. You calculate this, you'll get 10.75. You get it? Okay. Now, for the upper limit lambda R for the flange, this is 1.03 square root of E over FY. So, for flange, 0.38 1.03 for the web they are 3.76 and the upper limit is 5.7 so 0 0.38 1.03 3.76 5.7 okay square root of e over fy so computing this this is 1.03 square root of 200 thousand over 250 what you will get here will be 29.13 so this is your upper limit your actual lambda for the flange is bf over 2 over thickness of flange the length of flange that is critical for local buckling is its unsupported length that is BF over 2 uh, NSCP accepts this value other than this value if you want to use this value it's okay if you use this value it's also okay anyway its effect in the final answer will be immat is immaterial okay so therefore this is 1 to 5 over thickness of flange is 12 and this is 10.41. Your lambda F is less than the upper limit lambda PF. If our actual length to thickness ratio is less than the lower limit, then our flange is compact. So this is a compact flange. If it is compact, then it means local buckling of flange is not critical. So therefore, our MN is simply MP, which is 
equal to 442.5 kilonewton meter. So, if your web is compact, it is laterally supported, and the flange is compact, then it means our MN is simply MP. If the flange is compact and it is laterally supported, then torsional buckling, local flange buckling are not critical. The critical is the flange yielding, which is just this one. Okay? So, substituting here the value of 442.5 kilonewton meter will be able to get WL. And WL must be less than or equal to 40.3125 kilonewton per meter. This would be the live load that it can carry on top of the dead load. You follow? You get it? Okay. What about using ASD? Find our uniform live load that this can safely carry. In order to be safe using ASD, our total moment which is M dead load plus M due to live load must be less than or equal to capacity which is MN over omega. So the moment due to dead load is 1 is equal to WL squared over 8. So this is 20 times 6 squared over 8. While the moment due to live load is WL 6 squared L squared over 8 must be less than or equal to MN. We found MN to be 442.5. So this is 442.5 over omega. The omega for moment is 1.67. So from here, you'll get WL must be less than or equal to 38.5. 88 kilonewton per meter. So, this will be a little bit more conservative than our LRFD result. Do you follow? Kindly enroll in our online course. Refer your relatives, you refer your friends to the best online platform, online review for civil engineering. And also, if you have relatives who are college, they need our mastery courses for college algebra, differential calculus, analytic geometry, trigonometry, spherical trigonometry, and geometry as preparation for their college. Without those preparation, your son, your relatives, your friends will find it difficult really to cope up in their first year in engineering so we have those courses for them if you have friends or relatives who are still in college and they are really finding it hard to cope up with their civil engineering subjects or mathematics subjects refer them to us to enroll in our mastery courses or if it is you then enroll in our mastery course it will help you really a lot at a very very friendly very economical but reliable price. Also, I am inviting you to attend to our final coaching in preparation for the November 2022 board exam. It will begin on October 15. Okay? It is an advantage to be able to learn the solution and the actual board exam problems last May 2022. So the tuition fee for non-Padilla reviewees, non-PRC reviewees is 4,000. And for those who have who are already our students, it is discounted at 2,000. Okay? I am also inviting you to enroll in our special board exam courses, a solution to May 2022 
board exam, solution to November 2021 board exam, and solution to November 2019 board exam. The last three board exams. Okay? So, the last three board exams. It is also an advantage to learn or to know those uh, board exams. Okay? To be exposed to solutions of those board exams and learn the solution the easiest way possible. Okay? Because the probability that those problems will appear in this forthcoming board exam is about 20%. So, 20 to 30%. So, knowing 20 or 30% that will be repeated is an advantage. Okay? So, the tuition fee per course is 2,000 pesos. Okay? So, I hope you will, uh, we will see you and you will allow us to help you in your pursuit of your license. In order to enroll in our Co final coaching program for November 2022 board exam and for the special board exam solution courses, click the link below in this video. Okay? See you.